Dewey have just revealed a tiny electric hatchback, which honestly seems ridiculous, right? Apparently, it has 745 miles of range on one charge. I can't say if this is actually true, but it's been reported by n numerous media sources, 745 miles of range. I was thinking this would happen in 2035, not in 2025, but um, yeah, here it is. Here's the thing. It doesn't just have a crazy amount of range. It also has an 800 volt architecture that enables it to add 373 miles of range to the battery in 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, you can put 373 miles of range into the battery pack. If we thought the future was coming in sometime in the future, well, I guess we got it wrong because the future's it's already here. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. To mark the 28th anniversary of their partnership, Chinese state government-owned Sake Motors and General Motors have decided to make um, this electric hatchback. Apparently, it's similar in size to something like a BYD Dolphin, little, in fact, a tiny bit smaller than a BYD Dolphin. The Neo Firefly, it's about four meters long. It's not, not very big, but um, hey, if you want to drive from one side of the United States to the other and win that race, you know how they have a, have a race from one side of the US to the other side? I'm pretty sure this is, this is going to win that race. In fact, there's no question it's going to win that race. So this thing looks, I think, I mean, this is the concept version of the car, but obviously when they remove that mental looking yellow section at the back and just make it a window and put normal wheels on it, I think it's going to look amazing. I mean, the actual shape looks really good. I really like it. I don't know why, but I think it looks cool. Anyhow, according to Chinese media, this Sake General Motors EV it comes with 644 horsepower. So this thing is the size of a little hot hatch, like a Volkswagen Polo, and it gets 644 horsepower and 480 kilowatt. Yeah, that means it has more power than the Hyundai or Hyundai Ioniq 5N, way more power than a Tesla Model Y Performance or Model 3 Performance, in fact, it's got 100 horsepower more than Renault's new all-wheel drive 5 Turbo 3e, which costs, I think, about 200,000 US dollars. It can do 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds. Seems kind of slow for the amount of power it's got, but anyhow. Battery pack. The battery pack is really interesting because the energy density of the battery is the, this is the highest energy density battery of any EV I've ever heard of in history, as far as I know. If you know one with higher energy density than this, tell me what it is, because I believe that there's a few models of cars in China right now that are using semi-solid state batteries, but they don't have this kind of energy density. It has 350 watt hours per kilogram energy density. That's more than double the energy density in BYD's blade battery. 350 watt hours per kilogram. Yeah. So, in theory, it can go 745 miles on one charge. That's 1,200 kilometers. It also has, as I mentioned before, an 800 volt electrical architecture allowing for 600 kilometers of range to be added to the battery in 10 minutes. So it sounds like to me, the battery charging speed is around 700 kilowatt. Yeah, this is what's gonna happen, right? I mean, think about it in 2030, when there's lots of cars like this around that you can buy. And in 2035, when this is just normal, right? Just be normal to get battery energy density of 350 watt hours, a range of more than 500 miles, it'll be normal. Charging speed, 500 kilowatt plus, it'll be normal. People are telling me that in 2035, millions of the, millions of the world's population are gonna say, I don't want an electric car with a thousand kilometers of range or a thousand miles of range if you want it. I don't want an electric car that can charge in five minutes and has a thousand horsepower and costs the same as a two liter powered diesel vehicle or a two liter turbocharged vehicle. I'd prefer that internal combustion vehicle that costs me a hundred dollars to fill up in fuel every week. 
which can accelerate from zero to 62 miles an hour, or zero to 100 in about 11 seconds. That's what I'd prefer, that noisy old engine. Now, I, guys, I, I just don't think that many people will actually really think that in 2035, which is why I believe, and I presented a presentation in Indonesia recently, that it's game over for internal combustion in 2035. It's finished. Doesn't matter what the US does or says, it's finished. No immediate plans for production have been revealed. I sure as hell hope it goes into production, but um, who knows when it's going to happen. Here's the thing. I don't know what batteries are in this thing. I've been trying to find out, and I can't find out. Guys, if you know, let me know in the comments below, because I want to see these batteries in other EVs. 350 watt hours per kilogram. Think about it like this, right? Tesla Model Y, yeah, the standard range model, the model that 70% of people buy, might be even 80%. That has an energy density in those batteries of about 170 watt hours per kilogram. This is more than double. So if you kept the same size battery in the Model Y, the world's best selling EV right now this year, same size battery, you'd be looking at probably about a thousand kilometers of range. Thanks for watching. Great to see you. Bye bye. This is Buick's latest EV. And Buick, Buick sales in China, where well, most Buicks are sold these days, have been horrendous. Buick is trying to fight back. You know, General Motors is trying to fight back with EVs like this, which, to be fair, if this was sold in the United States or Australia or Europe and it was sold at these prices, I think it would be the best selling car in the world. I really do. I really think if General Motors wanted to sell this at this price, outside of China, it'd be the best selling car in the world, which sounds crazy, right? But when you look at the price and the features and what you're getting for the money, I mean, I'd be surprised if you disagreed with me. But let me know in the comments if you do. First of all, here are the details on this new EV that Buick hopes will save its future in China. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. First of all, this has 373 miles of range, but before I get to that, guys, I want to say a big thank you to all of our YouTube members. You guys, you're really helping support the channel. I so much appreciate it, especially right now with the YouTube algorithm, which has been totally, don't know what's happened to it, but I don't know about you guys, my YouTube feed, my personal feed, I'm getting videos that have been there that I've already watched from two weeks ago. It's popping up over and over and over, and I'm, I can't find stuff from all the people I've subscribed to. They've all disappeared. So I'm finding that people are having trouble finding the videos for this channel, so make sure you actually um, just click on the channel. You might even have to look for the Electric Viking in order to find our videos. So this new Buick, will it save Buick in China? I don't think it will because Buick sales in China were about 650,000 only four or five years ago. They've now fallen to about 10% of that number this year. That's the, that's the numbers we're looking at. They're likely to sell probably around 60,000 cars, if that, maybe only 50,000 for the whole year. 